Hey there, beer tubers. Welcome back to Maxwell Stars Beer Analysis 101 here tonight with a special holiday treat from Belgium. <coughs> Stop coughing. You're talking at a turn. We're going to look at Nice Schoof. Oh my God. We're looking at Nice Schoof. This is downhill. Anyway, we're looking at Nice Schoof, which is a, a strong, Belgian strong dark ale uh, made with uh, holiday spices. Now, we have a, a, an esteemed panel of people here tonight. We're going to go through them one by one. How are you doing tonight, Redbeard? Yes, you're going to. I'm doing very good. I'm sorry. That was my dog that just barked, and I was just freaking out on him for a second. Uh, I'm doing very good. What's going on, everybody? Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Thanks for having me. All right. So, the next person up on the panel here, we've got uh, Lee, the formerly as, artist formerly known as uh, Hoogly. How are you doing tonight, sir? Good. Good. It's Thank always you. whenever I mention your beer tuber past, you kind of give me that, yes. that reaction of oh, yeah. You. I wish you'd stop and just move along. You. I, wish, I wish you just went right out. Next, next guy. <laughs> and uh, next up, we've got uh, Kent Beer Reviews. Craig, how you doing tonight, sir? Very well, thanks. Cheers. Cheers. Interesting beer. Hmm. I hope so. Uh, next over, we've got uh, on the tenth. We've got Chris. How you doing tonight, sir? I'm good, thank you very much. I'm sorry I missed last week's uh, big Stella Stella performance or analysis. I see that uh, Craig's growing the beard, so he's going to be the next corrupter, apparently. But yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, well, I mean, it had to go somewhere once Joe shaved the beard off. It just sort of flowed to the next. Yeah. Kind of like. All that wasn't there like an episode of Star Trek where or something where the they, they they did one thing and it had to run away to another spot because I don't know, whatever. I'm getting off topic. And uh, speaking of uh, generally off topic people, Greg, how you doing tonight, sir? I can't walk because I got a massage from a dominatrix yesterday, so I'm so so. Oh God. Well, there's a cream for that. No, really, there is um, more than one. <laughs> well, if he had used it during anyway, uh, moving right along, we've got uh, last but certainly not least, we got Jamie from uh, in the base, or not in the basement, basement beer reviews, one of the basements. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. I'm feeling better now that uh, Chris has apologized that he didn't show up for the Stella review. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think I'm over it and uh, ready to uh, move on. And uh, yeah. Looking forward to this uh, Nietzsche Chwafa or Nice, however you pronounce it. Sure. Nice or Nice. I'm, I'm, I'm nice guessing right. Nice. Anyway. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, now that we've introduced everybody, let's move to the history of this beer. And this is an interesting one. This is going to sound in parts like the uh, the owner of the brewery are on drugs because it starts with fairy tales. Uh, so Brasserie Achouf is a brewery founded in 1982 in Achouf, Belgium, uh, located in the, the Walloni section of the Belgian Ardennes. While the name of the beer is similar, the beer is not just named after the town from which it originates, but from a local legend of a hillside col colony of goblins that once brewed beer to keep the entire nation of Belgium drunk year-round. The beer flowed directly out of a spring in the woods near Cedron, near the secret meeting place of the, the Knights Templar prior to the Crusades. However, a collapse occurred. The goblin colony was buried alive and the beer stopped flowing, forcing the Belgians to brew their own. This area of Belgium today is still known as the Valley of the Fairies and Shoof translates to gnome in the Walloon dialect, hence the gnome on the side of the bottle. Now, usually the regular Shoof, I don't have a bottle in my hand, I have one, but uh, has one gnome on it and uh, the gnome on the side of every bottle is named a shoof a lone survivor of that go goblin colony as the brewery story goes and as is most likely beer marketing because it doesn't sound real the gnome visited the brothers-in-law pierre gobron and uh chris uh, bauerwartz uh the brewery story goes uh, that um they uh, they met this gnome and gave them the recipe for le shoof at an eight percent ABV blonde ale, which in and in, in, in turn this inspired them to start the brewery. 
And with less than 500 euros, on August 27th, 1982, they successfully brewed the first 49-liter batch of Le Chouf in a former pig sty using two antique washing coppers. First, they first saw this as a hobby, but uh, the brewery was so successful that they were able to quit their jobs and work the brewery full time, and even expanded distribution into the neighboring Netherlands. In 1999, bottling was moved from a shoof to a new facility in Fontenelle, four kilometers away. Today, the brewer beer is sold in 40 countries around the world. So, Brasserie de Chouf today produces several beers and even liqueurs. I didn't write the names of the liqueurs, but they sounded cool. Um, such as Houblon Chouf, a 9% uh, hop triple. Mick Chouf, which is an 8% Scotch Ale. Chouf Bock 6666, which is a uh, uh, released in 1991, which is a, is a Bock. And, of course, tonight's beer, Nice Chouf, or Nice Chouf. Nice Shoof, introduced in 1993, is a 10% winter spice strong dark ale akin to the likes of uh, St. Bernard's Christmas. Uh, it's brewed with thyme and curacao orange peel and well suited for cellaring. In fact, I've got a three year old bottle here that I'm probably going to trash myself with later on, which I might actually open up while we're, we're doing this. Um, yeah, some people actually uh, on the internet have reported successful results of cellaring this beer for six plus years of aging, which sounds bloody amazing to me. Um, oh, here's the liqueurs part. Uh, they also make liqueurs such as Esprit de Chouf, an eau de vie distilled from five year old beer, and Chouf Coffee, a coffee liqueur made using Esprit de Chouf. Anyway, in 2006, the brewery was purchased by Duval Morgat, uh, the makers of the famous Belgian beer Duval and also owners of other breweries such as Deconic, Mare de Sioux, and Lambic Makers Leafman's, and U.S. Uh, Brewers Omegang Boulevard and Firestone Walker. Amongst the changes made to the brewery by Duval Morgat is building a new wastewater facility and doubling the brewing capacity. Anyway, so that was a rather long-winded and strange story. But, yeah, uh, because, there, there, you know, it's one of... One of three scenarios here: either A, all the the guys who found this thing were drunk and they got the uh, recipe off the digit. Uh, B, yeah, the real culture. B, there really were gnomes or goblins, those which are two different things, by the way. So there really were a colony of these things, and they were killed. So this brewery was uh, burnt, uh, sort of build off genocide. Or, or three, it's all bullshit. Well, either way, they. Built the brewery in 1982 and brewed their first batch in a pigsty. So, <laughs> yeah. So, I moving lie right. about that part. Yeah. Moving right along. Redbeard, do you have any, uh, have a, a, a story with this or is this the first time you've had it? First time I've ever had anything by this brewery at all. And, um, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not liking this so far. I got to say, if I'm honest, this is a, this is a weird beer, man. This is a very, very weird beer. Have you ever had anything like uh, Strong Dark from Belgium before? I think I've had a couple, but it's Belgian, like real Belgian, like the yeast on the bottom, like the sediment is freaky. But uh, yeah, beers like that, I, I, that's like one of only a few flavors, flavor profiles of beer kind of that I really haven't started to come around to. My palate hasn't got there yet, but I keep on trying them and I hope to someday be able to say I, I can enjoy it, but it's not terrible. It's just got a really, really mm. different flavor, I guess, overall, you'd say, and it just isn't really working for me so far. Mm. I can see where you're coming from there. Yeah. Lee, have you ever had anything, uh, had this before or anything like it? I don't think you have, have you? No, I've never had this before, but I've definitely had sort of strong, dark Belgians that are like this. Um, this is very much in the style of a quad, um, it's not as heavy on the dark fruit kind of side of things as a quad would be, but it's definitely somewhere in that ballpark. It, it feels like there's more of, um, uh, and I, I think this is from the, uh, invert, uh, sugar, uh, syrup that they use in this. It, it, it has, it has a sweet, um, not so candy like as, it is more almost chocolate-like in the way it just kind of combines with the spices, I think, more than anything else, because the spices are very in, in the background. But it, it gives it a little bit of spiciness. And, I mean, cocoa 
uh, for, for chocolate production or whatever on its own is considered a spice. So it's, it's got sort of a similar characteristic there. Um, it's like baker's chocolate or something. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's got a kind of a dry powdery uh, finish a little bit in, in the background. I'm liking this so far, though. Um, it, it's definitely not uh, super complex or anything like that, but as far as like a strong Belgian uh, beer and what is it, uh, 10%, right? Um, yeah, 10%. You, no, no alcohol. I'm not getting any alcohol out of this, so uh, it, it's very, very super smooth and uh, kind of creamy going down. Uh, I like it so far. Very nice. Cool. And uh, Craig, uh, have you had this before? What's your What's your history on this? Not had this before. Um, I've had the IPA. Um, um, but no, I've not had this one before. So, yeah, it's quite a. Um, I'm getting like hints of like, caramel, caramel chocolate notes. And then underline that there's a there's this kind of spicy, you know, ness to it, but that's all underlined. But like like Lee said, it's not not really picking up the ten percent ABV. You know, it's definitely there, but I wouldn't say it's ten percent. Probably more in the kind of seven range, something like that. Hmm. Yeah, very deceptive. Quite easy drinking. Quite a dangerous dangerous beer for me, anyway. It's slightly sticky. Uh, alcohol legs, yeah, nice beer, decent. I'd say this is. I'd say uh, just just to add in. This is this is kind of what I want from that Green King uh, Christmas pudding beer. This is kind of more what I'd have had expected from something like that. Like it, it's got that body to it, and it's got that kind of sugary stickiness to it, and everything. Like this, this tastes like what that should have tasted like. That festive beer was not tasty, in my opinion. That pudding stuff. Mm -hmm. Green can. <sighs> I think I ever had the festive beer. Anyway, moving along. Chris, have you I, ever? Had... Uh, I've never had this beer before, and uh, I wanted to say hi to to the twelve people watching. Thanks for coming out to check out this analysis. Um, I don't know how warm or how cold you guys are drinking your beer, but this is really cold, and I'm glad this is really cold because as it's warming up, you know me. I, you know what I'm going to say, but uh, you know what? It's not bad. This is uh, – it's really sweet, though. It's very, very sweet. I get a lot of caramel, like Craig was saying, on this one. Um, yeah, this is the first time I've had it, and, yeah, I'm looking forward to giving it some numbers in a, in a, in a few minutes. But, yeah, that's all I got. Right on, sir. And Greg, we always give your opinions with gusto. What's your? Uh, have you ever? Have you ever had this before? Well, Nick, no, I have not. I've not had anything from this brewery, so I'm a complete virgin. My cherries now pop. Thanks, Nick. We appreciate that. Welcome. Right on camera too. And I'm to me, good. this is a lot like a quad. It's a little spicier, a little heavier on the chocolate. To me, I almost feel it's like a quad, kind of mixed with a. Trip L, where you kind of get the little bit more of the chalk, a little bit more of the spices. Um, and it is pretty sweet, but I, I'm liking it. It's kind of what I'm looking for in this kind of a beer. So I'm I'm quite liking it. It's I don't get booziness, but it's definitely quite warming. Like, I definitely think the alcohol presence is there. I don't think you're going to fool anyone that you're drinking something lighter. But um. I feel rather alone right now with my dislike of this beer. <laughs> well, that, that's... Uh that's quite okay. Everyone's entitled to their opinion. I'm kind of coming around to it a little bit, though, to be honest. You're, you're probably pretty close to, uh, to to calling it a quad, really. I mean, it's classified as a strong Belgian dark ale, which is the same kind of class that, uh, like, Chimay Blue, the Grand Reserve, uh, where it's um, it's not quite a quad or an abbot, but the, the styles are very similar, and they're both really big, strong Belgian dark beers. They had, like, full of dark fruits and raisins and stuff like that. Um, whereas this one here is uh, like a winter spice version. So, I mean, which is, I, I always feel like, a, I always feel like a, calling it a Belgian dark beer is kind of a cop out of, you just don't want to quite qualify where it is in the spectrum of styles. So it's like, it's a Belgian dark, throw it in wherever you want. Yeah. I just put it over there at the rest of the pile. They really yeah, do that. With it. They really do that with just about every Belgian style though. Honestly, I, 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 I tend to find. Yeah. That, so, 
at, at the same time, it really does qualify because it's strong, it's Belgian, and it's dark. They don't fucking know where it is. That's what it is. All right. All right, so last one, and definitely not the least again, Jamie. Uh, have you ever had this before? Uh, I had it once, um, <clears throat> about a month ago, actually, and I bought it once. I, I, I like the beer, but honestly, I wouldn't have purchased it again if it wasn't for this. Um, I like, I, not with, I'm not like Redbeard, where I don't like the beer, uh, or the, like, what is it, the flavor for you, Redbeard? It's it's more or less the flavor, yeah. Like it's it's yeah. like I said, I'm coming around to it a bit, but it's, yeah. it's the for Belgian. me, it's not that. And I'll I'll get to what what I don't like about it in uh, when we go uh, style and personal. But uh, it's there's a lot of good things about the beer. I recommend it, but for me, I probably wouldn't buy it uh, again. Um, and I bought one for this just so I could hang out with you guys. Aww. So <laughs> your pressure for now. Yeah, we like you. We like you, Jamie. Thanks for coming. It's true. Thanks uh, for coming. Hugs and rainbows all around, buddy. <laughs> I gotta change my back. Those rainbows. Anyway, <laughs> South Park. Anyway, um, my my personal history with this, I can't remember exactly how long ago was the first time I, I had a little truth. I even got the glass. I like that glass. Yeah, I got that at Value Village of all places, I think. Anyway, the first time I ever had a Lachouf, I want to say 2014. Um, but of course, uh, I think it was around Christmas 2014 that they first, the, the, the actual, the nice shoe f showed up in NB liquor stores and, uh, I bought a bottle of it and I think I sat on it for three months and finally drank it for my birthday, um, then the following year. And these things ended up being shelf turds here in, in New Brunswick. Um, I'm not sure that these ones here might, the small white bottles might sell better, but these guys sat around and I ended up getting these on clearance for like five bucks for the big ass bottle like that or something. That's a good deal I, for strong beer. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For, for, the, for that, and I ended up buying a couple just to sell it away. So, just just uh, to interject for a second, Nick. You had this on your birthday in fe February of 2015. Sure, tell everybody when my birthday is. Well, no, I didn't tell you that it's on the 22nd of February. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, my bad. Oh, oh, sorry, my bad, my bad. Oh, oh sh shit! Just that's the worst. Now people are gonna send Nick presents. <laughs> Um, so this is like the second time I've ever had it, and I gotta say that I do like it. Um, I'm not sure if I absolutely love it. Then I cracked open that. I'm gonna give thoughts on this special version here, but the three year age version, the age is really smooth. This thing right out. But uh, yeah, um, I, I like it. But I, I think when it comes to the other beers in its class, it's gotta it's better. Anyway. Um, so I, I guess we could uh, go ahead and talk to people about their ratings. We can start back where we've been starting tonight with Redbeard from the other end of the panel. Sure. Um, so well, I, I can't fully recall how the ratings work. Is it style and overall, right? Style, style and overall, and out of 10. Yeah, so style, again, like I, it's not really a style I'm very familiar with, but again, as I'm getting more into it, it is becoming... Honestly, the sweetness is becoming a bit kind of better and stuff. It's it's, it's got a thicker mouthfeel to it. I don't know. I'd give this like a a seven for the style and then like overall, I don't know, like a six maybe, maybe. I'd like to try another bottle of this, honestly. Yeah, that that that's my opinion. <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, Lee. Okay, so thinking on this, um, as we've sort of uh, hinted throughout the panel here, uh, the idea of a stark of of a strong dark Belgian, uh, it really is sort of a catch-all for like official Belgian styles. You know, like quadruples, even doubles can kind of fit into that category depending on what beer it is. Um, as far as style goes, maybe this doesn't quite uh, fit 100% uh, with, with what you're looking at because it's just so jumbled. It's, it's kind of hard to say. So um, I'm just going to give it like a solid 7 in style just to be safe really more than anything else because um, if you compare this to like uh, like the, the App 12s or the Rochefort, 
Bolts or, or something along those lines. Not really in the same class. I mean, this is much more simple and stripped down compared to those beers, I think. Um, this is more akin to, like, a lesser version of, like, a Chimay Blue or something like that, but with a slightly different flavor profile. So I'm going to throw it in about a 7 because it's got some of the notes there that you kind of expect from these beers. Um, as far as personal enjoyment, though, um, I think I'm going to go uh, eight and a half, bordering on a 9 here with this because I really do like this quite a bit. Um, I, I, I like the mouthfeel. I, like, I think the sweetness is uh, intense and nice, but it's not cloying at all. I think it, it, it's just got the right amount. Again, like I said, if this was what that Green King uh, Christmas pudding beer tasted like, I would have loved that beer because this is just like spot on great for flavor for something like that. Um, uh, the spiciness is there, but it's not intense. It's just a very smooth, easy to drink beer. And uh, it's got a lot going on still with the flavor profile, all things considered. And at 10%, dangerous, like uh, Craig said. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Seven for style, eight point five overall for drink. Wow, very nice. You really liked it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Craig, what's, what's your thoughts? What's your rating? Um, kind of, it, it, it's surprised me to be honest. With you. It's it's much better than I originally thought it would be. Um, again, the style is is coming across for me more like a, a, a Dubois, something like that. Um, that's that's just me, um, but yeah, it's just kind of it, it's definitely above average for whatever style uh, of beer you want to put it in. Um, is it, it? It's not the best I've ever had, but it, it, it's it's probably just a little bit below that. So I think in the style, then for me, is it's like a, a, a seven, um, but. Bit similar to Lee, um, but I really do like it. I think it's really nice. Um, it's, it's dangerously easy drinking, as I've already said. And for my preference, oh, I agree. Nice. What uh, I, I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Like, what was the person? A, a, um, a, a nine. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Wow. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, Chris. What's your thoughts? Um, I'm not a huge fan of this, and it's not it has nothing to do with alcohol burn. I know I know Joe's just waiting for me to say it, but it's not. There's no there is no alcohol burn on this. Actually, I get more of an alcohol burn on this when I smell it as opposed to tasting it. I mean, you can smell a bit of that alcohol coming out of the top of this thing, but it's not it's not. It's, I'm not a fan of this. It's too it's a little bit too sweet for me. Um, it is a dangerous beer, I guess. I mean, at ten percent, look. I drink two of these, two or three of these. I'm passing out. Um, I agree. You never know that's ten percent at all. Yeah. So we're looking at uh, for style. I, I, I really, I, I really don't know. I, I mean, again, I, I say this every time we do this. I'm kind of a, a rookie in the in the cold craft beer world. So when it comes down to this style, I don't know what to give it for for a rating in the style of a Belgian, whatever it wants to be. So. On the safe side, we'll go with a, a seven, I guess. I'm going to go with Lee on this one. Um, personal preference on this one, I'm going to give this a six. Uh, I won't go out and buy this again. I probably will not buy this next year at all or any other time after this. Um, I'm going to That's finish. on you. I, I, I know it's on me. I'm going to finish this off, and then uh, I don't know what I'm going to have next, but it's probably going to be a little bit less sweet than, than this one. But... Uh, a little more, a little less boozy too, right? <laughs> well, it's not. It's not that it's boozy. I'm not getting a lot of. Alcohol. Yeah, it's, you can't tell there's alcohol. I mean, no, like, you can. like I said, I can smell. I can smell more of the of the burn than I can taste. You know what I mean? So, it's uh, it's sweet. It's a little bit too sweet for me. I'm not a big fan of it, but that's my own opinion. Uh oh, see what I did there? Oh, oh, oh segue. In my yes, opinion, segue. <laughs> oh. All right, yeah, that's almost like uh, something you about. you do on your channel often. There. What? Yeah, yeah. I right, just uh, so we got so what I say, hey, if, yeah, if anybody seven, ever wants Jamie to know Chris's those. opinion, you can check out his channel. <laughs> so, uh, Jamie, you got those numbers? That, that's my opinion. You can do whatever you want. There you go. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Moving on. Did you give your rating? Yeah, you did. Okay. 
Uh, Greg, what's your uh, what's your rating? I'm going to sort of echo almost exactly what Lee said, since he articulated it quite well, is that I think with style, you kind of have to look at it compared to quads, triples, doubles, whatever. They're all It's all kind of jumbled together. And I think sort of putting that all together, to me, this is most sim- feels most similar to a quad, maybe just because of the alcohol warming. And uh, in terms of that, it's it's a seven. It's not bad. It's actually quite good, but it's not among the top tier. Um, in terms of my personal preference, it's I wanted to go nine on this because I actually quite enjoy this, but it's a little too sweet after drinking. I'm almost done the bottle. It's a little too sweet for me. So I'm going to go down to an 8.5. It would probably actually be more like an 8.75, but we're doing a 20-point scale. So 8.5 is good. It's still a really solid beer. really like it. Not among the best in this style, but something I could very much enjoy. And for 4 bucks a bottle, I really, really can't complain about this. But also for 4 bucks a bottle, I'd probably rather a Rochford, uh, Rochford 12 so, or 10, whatever it is. 10, I think, is the one. Yeah, it is pretty good value considering what you get for that money. Yeah, I mean, in terms of value, there's no, like, I got a second bottle of this, and I'll very happily drink it, or I might age it, who knows, but I'll have no issues with 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 drinking the second one at some point. That rock was- thing you had, I think that, that just jogged something in my mind. I want to say I had that one a while ago, and it was kind of like this, but a little bit tastier. Like, I, I, yeah, I remember that one being similar to Roche for 10. I don't know. Yeah, Ro- Roche for 10, I think, is, the thing is, Roche for 10, I think, is kind of, I think it's probably one of the best beers you can get regularly. So it's not necessarily a fair comparison, but at the same time, it is, you do have to compare them, right? Yes. uh, Speaking on price there for a sec, what what was the, uh, like the original uh, going price for the bigger bottles of this, Nick, before they reduced it? Oh, you're asking me to remember what I did three years ago. I think it was around 10, 11, something like that. Okay, was it a six fifty or seven fifty? Oh, the bottle size is a seven fifty. <coughs> oh shit, that's a great price. Yeah, well, I mean, it's more like special releases now are a lot more expensive in India for some reason than they were. Something like that, they might have bought um, a couple cases of per store, and then they sat there for a year. But it was before they started bringing in. They started specializing more and more on craft beer and stuff that would sit for on the shelf for longer periods of time. Um, I think the, the the thing that really bugs me about NB Liquor today is how expensive some of the special releases are. Like, it's not uncommon to see stuff sells for like twenty, for seventeen to twenty one dollars, especially stuff from the brewery. Anyway, we're getting off topic here, and we got one more one more rating to give. You gave your rating already, Greg, right? I did seven and eight five. It wasn't as memorable as his usual rant tirade kind of things. Yeah, but, you know, I'm sorry, it's kind of boring. Although I will beer. say, I want I want Chris to stop calling himself a beer noob. He's at least a beer novice at this point. So let's give him give yourself credit where it's due, Chris. He's a here's a beer squire. He's that's he's right. A, you're you're moving up in the ranks. Learning. You're like a beer ultra boy. You're like a beer ultra boy. <laughs> anyway, um, moving right along, Jamie, what's your uh, what's your thoughts and ratings? Uh, for the style, I'll give it 7.25. Um, and uh, my personal, I'm going to give it 6.75. Uh, just a little bit lower uh, than, you know, a lot of you guys. For me, the biggest thing, like, it smells amazing. It's, it has that, like, I don't know, raisin pie, uh, cherry cola smell, nice and sweet. Uh, the taste, it's, you know, it has, all, it has all the notes that you're looking for. There's that molasses, and it's kind of sweet, and... Uh, you know, the dark fruits, but it's just, it's too thin um, for like a 10, for a 10% beer. I want something that's a little more, you know, just like a thicker mouthfeel, something that sticks around a little bit longer. It's just too, it, some people like this. It's, it's too, for me, it's too drinkable for a 10%. Like it's too, too watered down um, and uh, just uh, not, not what I'm looking for in a high alcohol beer. I want something a, li- a little more uh, closer to oatmeal than tap water, I guess. So maybe I'm the Paul of the group tonight, but yeah, a little too thin. I found it thick. Mm-hmm. Weird. Well, it is thick. I mean, it's a big, heavy beer, but at the same time, it's compared to other beers of a style. I'm trying to think of other, like, if you were to compare this to, like, Chimay Bleu, the Grand Reserve, I see Rod's talking about that in the comments. Um, it is similar in style to that, but I find it's a lot lighter than that one, too. It this really is... reminds me of, like, a, a Roche 10 or a Tra- La Trappe's Quad. 
This this is like a Chimay Blue that's been aged for like three years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's that yeah. yeah. smoothed out. Actually, it's smooth. out a little bit. But yeah. I also find you still get that yo that very youthful beer flavors out of this thing too, where it's very. I don't think it's necessarily like super sweet, but I do get like rougher flavors, like that that big dusty like the baker's chocolate we had discussed or dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. uh, I find it's uh, very earthy as well, and I'm not. I'm, I'm finding because of the spice and the earthiness and, and everything to it is making it maybe a little bit more thicker in the gullet than than uh, than it, it really uh, would really want. That said, um, I, I find it's very very nice. It's uh, got I'm getting notes of, like spices like cinnamon, clove, raisins. Uh, raisins aren't a spice, but you get what I mean. <laughs> I, I, I'm not getting any booze. The only thing I'm really noticing is this is really boozy for is that I'm starting to feel a little woozy after drinking. You know most of this, <laughs> and, and and of course some of that too. Double fisting already. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, you don't really pick up any of the booze off of this. So overall, I think out of the style, I'm going to give it a seven and a half. There's better out of this style. I would definitely take a Saint Bernard's Christmas over this thing, uh, but uh, overall, I, I still really like it. Going to give it an eight out of ten. There we go. And yeah, we can also. Do you want me to give my thoughts right now on the age version? Sure, why not? Do it up. All right. Um, I think that aging this thing really does wonders to it because I noticed the difference right away sipping between the two of them. And, of course, part of it could be, you know, three years of batch variation. They make it differently slightly now or something. But I find that this thing is a lot smoother. I find with most it strong Belgian ales, they really benefit from even a year or two of aging. Yeah, it's, a, it's yeah. perhaps maybe a bit thinner. Um, the chocolate on it is definitely lighter. You still get that dusty chocolate in there, but it's not as present. The biggest thing I, I notice on it is that the raisins come out uh, a lot more, and the earthy is, earthiness is definitely dialed back. Um, there's a bit, maybe a bit more cinnamon coming to this, but it's overall very, very smooth. And it's it's like drinking like an aged Saint Bernard's or an aged um, um, Saint uh, Chimay Blue or something, because it's really super smooth and enjoyable. And once again. You do not pick it up at all. That's ten percent, and that's probably as bad as it is great for this beer because you can go through the whole thing of this thing and then realize, realize the fuck you are. Yeah, I'm done already. There you go. Well, I just, you had a big barley wine before coming on. Yeah, I had a thirteen percent like a couple hours before this too. And so. yeah. yeah, and one thing I noticed is um, the caps on the. Um, let's shoot. I'll show you next to this one. It's one of the bigger ones on the big bottles. So, go by one where they use the uh, you have to use a bigger bottle opener to get the cap off. Well, mine's mine's different than yours, I think. Well, yeah, but I talked yeah, talk about the big bottles, the 750s. Oh, uh, I got the gnomes or the quote unquote goblins. Yeah, I got the same one you got, Lee. I think the same little weird kind of stubby bottle yeah. thing. They need they need yeah. to clarify their story a little bit. It's either gnomes or goblins, they're two different things. Come on now. They're craw, they're half breed. Half in, Walloon, breed. in Walloon, they're probably simple. Oh, creatures. geez. Goblins obviously are different creatures in our mythology. Uh, they're they're <laughs> noblins. Noblins. There we go. They're not garden gnomes. They're even, garden gnomes. Even, even without him on here, we've been corrupted by Joe. Just to go over the noblins, sorry, the numbers uh, 7.1 <laughs> for the style, 7.6 for personal preference. Huh, cool. That's good. Oh, hop noblins. Speaking of hobnobblers, um, let's move over to the comments. Anybody want to read them? Oh my God, there's so many. Like, if you want to go from the start, I can it's read mostly pretty fast. Joe too. Yeah, Joe. Joe has been like Let's... keeping the comments as comment section alive. Started with yeah. mute yourselves, you inconsiderate bastards. That was the best. I think that that was because of Oreo barking like a little Joe. fucking rat. And then again, don't let red beard fool you. That's a rat in the background barking. That was. <laughs> I gotta love, I gotta love the Joe. Gotta love the Joe. Don't be sending that around. Apparently, uh, Nick Nick has Nick has a whore mouth. He needs to shut up, down, and settle down. Um, That's true. Be beard, beard corruption is flowing through you. Yeah, Joe, yeah. Joe lost all his ability to corrupt through the beard. I got, actually the beard. The beard was apparently Joe's filter. Now that it's gone, he's able to corrupt even more. It's a frightening, frightening. Didn't even know that Joe. And uh, in the basement, it got called Nick, and average Joe was not happy at all about that. Lost his mind a little bit, and then. Uh, Rod, Jay showed up, said, hey, what's going on with your shaft? Uh, hey, Rod, how you doing? Hey, anal wisis has turned dark. And apparently my uh, my honesty was just not appreciated by Joe. 
If there's no integrity on this panel, especially when he's present. Three, uh, three year bottle, dark, the spice is fading on the dark fruits are coming up. Stuff drinks like a cola. Uh, raining on your parade commented there. He's got an older bottle. Oh, it, like I was saying, it's so smooth. So smooth. Apparently, <laughs> apparently we're an all-star cast. Rod J, all right. great team, an all-star cast. Thanks, man. Appreciate that. Uh, somebody, then somebody had commented, uh, we have 12 viewers now, and at that exact moment, I looked over, oh, and it was. It turned, it turned 13, like as you were saying, 12. That was kind of funny. And now you've, you finished talking about it, I see 11. I'm at 10 now. Chris, about 10 minutes, going down the drain, the burn. Yeah, no, it's not going down the drain. No, definitely not going down the uh, Joe wasn't able to find this. That's why he's not in the panel tonight. Uh, he was able to find the regular and the IPA, but no nice, nice, whatever it is. And that, then again, my honesty isn't appreciated. I won't be coming back. I won't be coming back. I'm sorry, guys. I apologize. <laughs> Good thing Ewart isn't here. Am I right? Well, it's probably part of it, yeah. He's a, an old man who hates everything, including himself. <laughs> he, he does love Werther's Originals, though. Well, that, there you go. Well, that, 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 <laughs> that really emphasizes the old man part. Jamie is the best guy reviewing beers in the basement that Joe knows. Um, I, don't, I don't know you, but I see as far as basement. Yeah, like, uh, well, Chris moved up in the world, so yeah, you're there now, I guess. <laughs> uh, a big old apartment in the sky. Uh, Rod J, if it's like Shimei Blue, he needs to hunt it down. Got a hashtag, that's just me from Joe. Alcohol burn on the nose for fuck's sakes, Chris going downhill. <laughs> no plugging your own fucking channel in the analysis. Ban, hashtag ban on the 10th. Uh, another two years on his bottle, he thinks it would be cool. Jesus. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to um, keep my other big bottle. Uh, I've got two of them, so I'm going to keep the other one for a little while longer anyway. Oh, so you have another one still aging. Wow. Well, oh, yeah. Otherwise, I would... Oh, yeah. Average Joe saying it's more comparable to the Rochefort te 8 than the 10. And then in terms of actual style, he goes all off on the uh, Belgian Dark and being not a quad that we talked about a bunch. And uh, apparently it was because Greg put him to sleep. Some hashtag Raisin Pie. <laughs> Uh, we're almost uh, Lee. Lee uh, you are someone to sleep. Lee is uh, Rod's kind of drinker. We could probably throw some good stuff back in a sitting. Average Joe, goblin gnomes. <laughs> Lee is known to fall off a bed or two during a hangout. Nice, and Sounds about right. Chase West got popped up. We uh, <laughs> Nick passed out in his chair with pickle chips all over his chest. And hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah. DJ, I'm not past it. We, we just got co comments all across the spectrum here. Goodness. Yeah, no. Good times. Mm. All right. Well, that's the uh, that's the comments. Anybody got any uh, uh, final thoughts about this? As long as we're sober enough to get them. I came I came around to it a little bit. Like, I want to say, again, I, 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 I unlike uh, Chris with uh, I I do want to try another bundle. Just because, like I said, it, this this style is one of those styles that it's one of the elusive ones that I'm not quite there yet. And I want to be the kind of guy who can be like, I like all the different kinds of beer, you know what I mean? Like, So I'm going to keep on trying this style. Because it was like IPAs. If you watch my channel, the first few months is just me sitting out in pain as I drink IPAs. You're, you're actually quite close to correct there because, I mean... But back in the times, like craft beer was coming in, but just before the, the we ended up getting like these high end super craft beers that it was Belgian beers were kind of the big thing for a while, like around 2009, 10, 11, where they were the premium shit and craft beer was trying to imitate them. Now I think there's a lot of craft beers out there that uh, that uh, kind of best this kind of thing. But it was the most interesting stuff you get on shelf was the imports for a while, and I, I believe. It, you know, it's IPAs now because you want to try the latest and greatest IPA. This, when it was uh, the, the Belgians were all the rage, this is was definitely one of the most interesting ones you could pick up. Crazy. Like, yeah, that, that's that's way before, like I said, back back then I would have been drinking like Bud and stupid mainstream bleh, beer that now, <laughs> oh, now it's, it's so mainstream. Now, it's just now, now it's like, I don't know, Bud just like puts me to sleep now. It's so boring and unexciting and just, nah. 
Call uh-huh. your mainstream. I need my wire rim glasses now. <laughs> you know right. what I mean. Just wonder, are these elves? Do you think they're sexually active together, or do you think they're just friends? Well, they need to make more elves somehow. They, Although I, I, I noticed that they look beard. Uh, so maybe it's like elves with beards tend to get it on or something. Like, like is that kind of the way? Is that kind of the way Joe's known to breed? You know, he puts his beard together with another, and they make a bearded baby. I don't Maybe know, the be, guys be, and the girls should, both have beards, so that, 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 this could be a mating a mating couple right here. You don't know. These, these two look oh, exactly alike. I, I just noticed something about this label because I remember I noticed that one bald guy that's the normal Ashuf gnome. The other one is the gnome that's off of the Mixhuf Scotch Scotch ale bottle. So I'm oh, thinking maybe that's Ashuf and Mixhuf. Oh really? Yeah, he, he's he's wearing the kilt, so he's the one. Yeah, in he's games. wearing like a kilt. That's funny. So there's, so, there's all he's, the he's the one in the Highland Games. Yeah, well, the, one, the, the one in the, ki- the, <laughs> one in the kilt is like the small spoon. Yeah. Uh, I think they're uh, twins, so I think we're talking incest here, guys, and we should just really drop off the topic. They sound uh, nice, to be honest. Listen, listen, all you have to do to make it a proper movie is just have when... to say, not, 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 not your sibling porn movie. That's what they do nowadays. It's not your mother. Yeah, it's, it's, your, your, ste- it's your stepmother. So your stepmother. Yeah. Your step- it could be a there's no genetic He might be a competitor in the Highland Games. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah. <laughs> who needs who needs Joe to corrupt things when Lee's here? What are you talking? What what did I yeah. do? Exactly. No, Joe, it's, Lee, it's all, Lee, it's all Craig. It's yourself. all Craig's beard. That's all it is. <laughs> Craig's beard. Craig's, Craig's doing it. Some bit. Let the let let the corruption flow. Pray, pray, pray for Craig. Thank God I can't grow a beard. Wow. The one on the left can lift a hundred times his body weight. Joe says. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. This is, on me. This is on me. Any final comments from the other side of the panel? Craig, Chris, Greg, um, Jamie? Well, I'm switching over to the here as soon as we uh, finish up here. I'm going to drink some Canadian breakfast stout. I'm going to research for our future <laughs> panel on that. Yeah. So hopefully, we'll bring it down. You have to send me one first. Spoiler anyway. alerts. I'm, uh, I'm looking that. forward to next week uh, on the 10th, the uh, all Coors Light uh, Wednesday night special. Uh, tune in at oh. 8 p.m. to 2.30 <laughs> in the morning. Special <laughs> basement uh, beer review. Oh, he's oh, just oh, taking oh, over. I, I just bought a fucking case of Coors Light. Just a all right. Holidays. All right. All right. Let, let's move on. Now, we, I don't think That's we made a channel <laughs> or anything. <laughs> I don't think we made a final decision what we're, what we're beer we're doing next week, did we? Or yeah, did we yeah, want an idea? That's what happens when we let Jamie talk. He just takes the fuck over. He takes things right the fuck over. He's a mute. Are, are we going back to macro or are we staying in the micro? Well, I, I mean, say, I say it's Christmas. Can we do? Uh, can we do the uh, Saint Bernard's Christmas? Can enough people get that? I have a bottle. I can't get that. So. Uh, it's a couple years old. Seen of or heard of? I could have. I could have got it, but not now. I mean, we've got we've got the uh, the regular Saint Bernard's twelve. We could always do that if enough people can get it. Yeah, I can't get that either. I've never actually had that. <coughs> I've never seen that. I think it's. I think what it's going to be is we're going to have to do some to discuss it over the next uh, couple of days, hopefully before Christmas, and get uh, Macho Man to post some. Sounds good. Yeah, so just basically, basically, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be one of those. We don't know what we're doing next week, and we'll let you know later. There you yeah, go. It's, it's gonna be something I, awesome I, or something really shitty. I, I wish we could do like a like a, a vintage ale, like Fuller's or Saint Ambrose. But in New Brunswick, we got the Saint Ambrose. In Ontario, they got the Fuller's. So, and not one of not the other ones. So we it's have a couple Saint Ambrose here. Nothing old or vintage though. Hmm. Anyway, what about Rushford Ten? Can everyone get Rushford Ten? No, I mean I have a bottle, but it's a couple of years old. I'm gonna say I haven't seen that anywhere around here. Oh, try, you're in Ontario, right? True. You the only quote-unquote Belgian beer I can get right now is fucking uh, Unibrew Blanche de Chamblay, or or the uh, or their six pack for the for the winter season. That's all I can get. It's nah. fucking pathetic. I, I can get that same six pack. Belgian beer, you can get stuff like toi. Well, well, I guess yeah. Okay. <sighs> We, re- re- we, already, we already did Stella though. Yeah, we got to redo it. Yeah, yeah, we're not doing it. That's, not That's redo. two weeks. Two Hello. weeks of palate maturation. Review the same beer okay. over every week. We're gonna cellar age some Stella for two weeks. And... 
All right. That's funny. All right. So we'll we'll post everybody later and and, and what we're gonna do next week and uh, go from there. And if we don't see you sooner, like on a hangout or something, everybody have a nice Merry Christmas or whatever holiday you're into. Best of us. Already done with. And send send in your tips for the pickle murders. Cheers, cops everyone. Need, cops need the help. It says so I, don't, I, don't know, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what we're doing after this right now. I don't know if somebody's going to host something live or online or offline. But uh, if anyone in the comments that I've seen that Rajay wants a link to what we're doing after, so uh, mm-hmm. make sure somebody gives them one. And uh, sure. yeah. I think we're all uh, jumping over to Jace Westcott's channel. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't even have a link to the channel. All right. Well, catch you folks later. And I, I think I think Dr. Dave is hosting no. a live chat in yeah, front yeah. of a homeless shelter. I, what, what, what's, 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 yeah. Is he murdering any YouTube, any, any uh, women on YouTube? All right. Now we're going a little bit too far.